Hi everyone, it's Samafor here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to trace a raster image and convert it to a vector graphics in Photoshop CC 2021. So when it comes to tracing images, you might ask why use Photoshop and why not use Adobe Illustrator instead. The answer is that if you want only to print your image with a scalable size without being pixelated, all you need first is converting the image to vector graphics and save the result in EPS file format. You can use Photoshop to do that. But if you want to make precise oriented vector graphics with clean and sharp lines like logo design, doing so is better using Adobe Illustrator. If all you need is only Photoshop, let's jump right into the tutorial. Take note that this image consists of simple shapes or in other words, not too many details. So if you are using Photoshop CC 2021 or newer, you can use the content aware tracing tool to trace an image like this quickly. To enable the content aware tracing tool, go to edit, select preferences, and select technology previews, then check the enable content aware tracing tool. We need to restart Photoshop to make the changes we just made take effect. So click OK and close the Photoshop. Now reopen your image with Photoshop. Now we can activate the content aware tracing tool. Then click this button for quick tracing and make sure you select path at this drop down. Every time you want to trace an image like this, I recommend starting the tracing from the innermost shape, then followed by the shape that overlaps beneath, and so on. So every shape that you trace will have a separate vector layer. Alright, you can always zoom in using Alt, Mouse, Scroll Up shortcut whenever you need to. Let's begin tracing starts from this area, then hover your cursor over the edge until Photoshop detects the edge. Click the edge of the first shape, and Photoshop will automatically make the paths for detectable edge. Then match the foreground color the same as the shape's color you just traced. Then click the shape button to make a new shape layer for the area you just traced. Here's the first shape we just traced. The next step is to trace the second shape, which is the area that overlaps under the previous shape we just created. So make sure the image layer is selected. Deactivate the shape one layer for a while. Make sure this button is still active. And click the detectable edge of the area we are going to trace. If you want to trim any parts that Photoshop accidentally trace, click this icon and click the unwanted parts. Now match the foreground color to the shape's color. And click the shape button to create the second shape layer. These are the two shapes we just traced. Again, when you are going to continue tracing for the next shape, make sure the previous shapes layers are inactive. The image layer is selected. Then click this button and start tracing again. Match the foreground color with the shape's color. And click save. That's for the third shape. Deactivate the image layer for a while to see what we get. Keep tracing other areas using the same steps. In this demonstration, I will be tracing other parts step by step so that you can follow along. There is an area here where Photoshop can detect the edge, 
So to make it detectable, try to increase the detail amount until Photoshop recognizes the edge. You may also try to change the tracing option to detailed and then start tracing again until to the last area. Then activate all the shapes layers to see what we get and make sure all areas of the image are already there. Now I am going to save this vector graphics as SVG file so it will be useful for a scalable graphic design on the web. Go to file, export, export as. If you don't see the SVG option under the formats drop down, go to edit, preferences, export, check the use legacy export as and click ok. Then go to file again, export. Select export as format SVG. You might also set the other settings if you need to. Click export. Decide the destination location and the file name and click save. That's a copy for web or online media. But if you want a copy for a large scale print media, you simply need to save a copy as an EPS file format. That's all for this tutorial, if you like this video, please give a thumb up and if you want more tutorials like this, hit the subscribe button for more future uploads. Thanks for watching this video and see you next time.